This is the SEO Mindset Podcast with your hosts, Sarah McDowell and Tasmin Sullivan. This podcast is for SEO professionals and each week with the help of our wonderful guests, we discuss the important stuff that actually affects our careers and progression, but sadly often doesn't get talked about. You know, the invaluable soft and interpersonal skills that are often taken for granted, such as the skills we need for listening, time management, communication, and more. We also talk about the big issues that affect us and our careers, such as burnout, imposter syndrome, self-belief, saying no, plus other big issues and obstacles. With this podcast, we want to share knowledge on topics that unlock our listeners' true potential and enhance not only their careers, but all parts of their lives. So are you ready to prioritize your own personal growth and career development? Then let's crack on with this week's episode. Hello and a very warm welcome to the SEO Mindset Podcast. Very, very excited because I have a wonderful guest with me today to talk about burnout, including warning signs and how to avoid it. And that guest is Brenda Malone, who is a highly driven and results orientated senior SEO technical specialist. So, a very warm welcome to the show, Brenda. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here today. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to come on the podcast. How, how are you doing? Whereabouts in the world are you? I am in Northeast Ohio, over in the States, where it's 80 degrees. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nice and hot and humid, and we're enjoying the summer here. I'm hoping you got some air con. Yes, yes. Unlike over in England, we air conditioning is standard. We have to have it. I mean, it should be. It should be. Like, yeah, um, air con is a luxury. My uh, friend recently bought a house, and uh, she decided to go down the air con route, and it was like unheard of. But like, yeah, she's she's living life now. <laughs> She's a maverick. Everybody wants to visit her now. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's going around for dinner. Um, But yes, well, thank you very much. So yes, like I uh, said at the beginning, uh, we are going to be talking about burnout. So um, a very important topic because I think this is something that a lot of our listeners, wow, 100% resonate with. I know I do. So to start off with, I just thought um, I'll give a, a brief definition of what burnout is. Um, so I found this on mentalhealth-uk.org, and they say that burnout is a state of physical and emotional exhaustion. It can occur when you experience long-term stress in your job or when you have worked in a physically or emotionally draining role for a long time. Um, so, yeah, what do we think about that definition of burnout? I think I agree to an extent with that definition, but I think it needs to be widened. Yeah. And include much more than things that are happening in the workplace. We aren't just a product of what happens in the workplace. We're some of what happens in our entire life outside of the workplace, what has shaped us into the people that we are. All of these things contribute to burnout. I think burnout is just a reaction to stress, stress and trauma that we've had in our lives and our the way we deal with it. And when we don't deal with it, we get to the point of mental and physical exhaustion. So I agree with the definition as proposed by the mental health, but I just want to widen it to say mm. that burnout can happen outside of a workplace. Pity the poor working moms who have to be everything and do everything. Burnout occurs when they have to keep be the, the constant caregivers with mm. no breaks, relentless. Think of the social workers who have to deal with people who are in constant trauma. I think that it affects them vicariously. Mm. And they experience burnout dealing with the trauma of others. 
So it's not necessarily stress in the workplace. It's the sum total of who we are and how we, how we deal with the baggage we bring to everything and how we react. A bit unconventional, I'm sure. <laughs> no, like I completely agree because, yeah, there is a mixture, isn't there? And it all sort of um, work, personal, all of that sort of comes together and everything has an impact. Exactly. So I just want to share some research and I can never, never really know how you pronounce this company. D-E-L-O-I-T-T-E. Deloitte. Deloitte. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. (laughs) I'm having one of those days where I'm just struggling with words. Uh, (laughs) But yes, uh, they carried out an external marketplace survey of 1,000 full-time US professionals to explore the drivers and impact of employee burnout and found 77% of respondents say they have experienced employee burnout at their current job with more than half citing more than one occurrence. Uh, does that sort of stat surprise you or are you kind of like, yeah? I- no, that does not surprise me at all. You're correct. Especially within the past century, with all of the recent developments, we are constantly online, on stage, 24-7, you know, the podcast, the phones that are always in our hands. They sit beside our beds. We can't even sleep at night for worrying about the dings going off. Mm. We're just overwhelmed. Technology is the best of things and the worst of things. It takes away our time to just be still and relax and let work be work. Let home be home and let your relationships grow without the clutter of the constantly constant need to be on, active and alert. Not surprising at all. I mean, it is overwhelming, isn't it? Because we are we are in an age where we are so connected and it's so hard to switch off. And um, I mean, how many times do we panic when we lose our phone or we realize that we don't have our phone when we're out? We're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> or there's no it's funny you should say that. I'll turn around. If I'm in the car and I've forgotten my phone, I'll immediately turn around and go back home and get my phone. <laughs> because what if something happens? What if someone needs me? You have to have that phone. You have to be connected. And I suppose as well, um, that's where like there can be this overlap with um, work and um, work and personal. So because um, we we're still connected when we log off, aren't we? Because if we've got um, I don't know, like for example, uh, we use Slack uh, within our organization um like if you've got that on your phone uh for I don't know when you're out and about um with your job um if you're not turning off your notifications then you yeah you're instantly gonna you're, you're always connected there uh many people put them uh email on their phone don't they like um so exactly. there is that yeah in fact I was supposed to be at a meeting yesterday and I was running like two or three minutes late And sadly, I'm driving and trying to connect teams up with a meeting. It's so sad. You know, I was putting myself in danger and everybody else. So I just said, stop. The meeting can go on without you. You don't need to be connected at this point. Mm. And I didn't connect and everything was fine. (laughs) The world kept spinning and getting hotter. Are you sure that the world didn't explode? (laughs) How would you know you weren't connected? (laughs) I like that. So I think a good thing to sort of cover here are sort of um, telltale signs of burnout. Um, What sort of telltale signs would you look out for or uh, have you experienced it yourself? Oh, my God. My middle name is burnout. But I'm going to propose an interesting theory today. I think some of burnout is self-imposed. It's self-generated. You know, I have to have a talk with myself and an understanding with myself. And I just realized this within the past six months to a year. I've been burnout in practically every job that I have. But I think it's self-imposed. And I'm going to say that because 
procrastination. I'm a big, giant, 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 deep procrastinator. So that pushes all of my deadlines to the last minute. And then that stress level goes to atomic proportions. The stress level, the cortisol uh, chemical just freaks my brain out and I get burnt out. I'll work furiously. For example, I'll have two weeks to do a project. Something within me makes me procrastinate until the last 36 hours before I even begin the project. And then I'm working around the clock, 36 hours. And guess what? At the end of that 36 hours, I've got burnout, self-induced burnout. And I had to come to a realization that, yeah, it's 10% of the duties and responsibilities that the employers give you. It's the need to stay connected, but it's also within me that I don't approach my tasks and responsibilities in an urgent matter and space and time it out. I just get distracted with surfing the internet or mm. I've got a tweet, you know, <laughs> I got to keep up with the tweet with my uh, 5,000 people on Twitter. That's more important than dealing with my projects. So it's self-induced burnout. That's, I mean, interesting viewpoint, and uh, I have to, I have to agree because so obviously there's going to be different moving parts and different things that sort of feed into burnout. But I do think we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves um, because, and maybe because I, I procrastinate as well. And in my opinion, you're either procrastinating because you don't really want to do a project, or it, it feels big, or you don't know how to get started. Bingo. Or you feel that you've got all this time and other things are more important sort of thing. So there could be different things. I thought that was unique to me. <laughs> other people feel that way also. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Wow. But it's true, isn't it? Because like if um, I, I've had this so many times where especially if something feels really big or especially in SEO, um, because a lot of the time um, you might not have experienced something that you're trying or um, it's out of your comfort zone or you're going into you're doing some exploratory work. Like there's a lot of unknowns in in SEO uh, because as well as your T-shirt, I know this is audio, but as your T-shirt says, it depends. <laughs> it does maybe that feeling and then we push like oh this is too much I'll 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 do it another time I'll do it when I'm in a better frame of mind I'll do it like yeah that is precisely the way we feel it's analysis paralysis I'll analyze a task or big project that I'm not quite sure of how to uh, how to break it down and get it done and as a result I don't do it I can't do it because I'm busy researching, I will research a project until the end of the earth, instead of just doing it, putting it on paper, you know, which is why I have to go to Twitter and research and ask my people, what would they do? It's just paralysis to move forward. Yes. That I'm brings so on great. this, this, this panic at the end. And then at the end of it, I'm ready to quit my job. I'm ready to go and you know, I can go to the local grocery store and be a checkout girl because they don't have this kind of stress. <laughs> Happens every single time. Every time, every yeah. time. You know, and I think my um, need to be perfect. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my work. And that's a big stumbling block. I bring on these burnout situations thinking that everything has to just be perfect and I've got to know everything before I even just put my opinions out there but I think um I mean it's it's good to have that level of perfectionist um in you because the level of work but I think sometimes yeah that is an obstacle uh, when sometimes like things can be tweaked things can be changed and things should be especially in SEO like everything can be measured right um exactly. so whatever project or campaign or pay or whatever you're working on just get it out there tweak it measure it it doesn't 
it doesn't stay like once you've published it it's not like something going in print right on a, a magazine or newspaper do you know what I mean like yeah some and that, that brings me another four-letter word fear it's yes fear that I don't know what I'm talking about I mean these guys have been in SEO for 20 30 years they know it they're the experts who am I to give us um a preposition or a proposition of something that's happening on a website. What do I know? It's just fear that I am totally wrong and I'm going to harm people by voicing my opinion or putting my opinion on paper. Just fear, fear of inadequacy, of in awe of the other professionals in SEO. It, it just paralyzes me sometimes. And I suppose that's another thing about things being online, isn't it? And connected is I, I do this myself, but you always compare yourself to other to other people, don't you? Or other what other people yes. are doing. And I think that's we need to stop doing that because we're <laughs> all doing amazing things and we have to remember that. And sometimes I do if I am having some like self doubt or anything like that like sometimes I sit back and like list actually no this is what I did today or this is what I've achieved so I think sometimes it's all about being kinder isn't it to yourself I suppose and this is true this is true but I've got to get there I'm not totally there I just expect so much of myself that it just paralyzes me so much you know and I used to think it was the totally 100% the fault of the job. They piled too much on me. But I just left a job where it was unreasonable. I was being asked to work 18 hour days forever and ever and ever and ever, which was ridiculous. Now yeah. that was officially burnout. Physically, I couldn't keep doing it, you know, sitting at a computer, doing website audits and fixing up WordPress websites for 18 hours a day. That's officially burnout. But then I moved, changed. I knew I needed to change. I changed the jobs and it was okay for the first couple of weeks. And then that third week when that giant, giant audit came, guess what? <laughs> I had burnout again because I didn't know exactly how to approach it, how to break this giant project up into tasks. So I procrastinated and waited and researched and researched until 36 hours before it was due. And then I worked myself to the nubs of my fingers, stayed up, drank pots and pots of coffee. And then at the end of the project, I sat and I thought, Maybe I don't want to do this job anymore. I had self-doubt, burnout. It followed me to my new job, and I was it was astonishing to me, which is why I self-reflected and said it's probably me, more so than the responsibilities of the job. I mean, I think um, I, I think it's both responsibilities, isn't it? And I think sometimes you have to you have to speak up, don't you? So if you ever feel like something's too big or you need um, support or do you know what I mean? You need external resource. I think if you highlight and bring that up um, with with your boss, hopefully they'll be understanding and they'll be like, yes, let's look into that. And they are, but something in me just doesn't raise my hand and say I need help. I think they think I'm expected to know these things. I have so much pressure that I put on myself, which contributes to the whole burnout situation. I don't we, raise my hand and I need to start raising my hand more. And I think also um, it's about delegation as well. Um, so yeah, like um, obviously you have your own strengths and you have your own passions, things that you are passionate about or you like doing, or you have experience, you're going to feel much more comfortable doing and you won't be procrastinating. You'll probably be like, right, I know how to do this. Let's get on it. Um, so I think right. if you can start, I mean, again, it depends like, um, like <laughs> the resource internally and it depends. I mean, yeah, I'm SEO cliche 101 <laughs> over here, aren't I? Uh, but yeah, it depends on uh, the size, internal resource, but also like external. And there's always ways that 
you can lessen the pressure on yourself and yeah work needs to do that work needs to appreciate that don't they um but I suppose they can only do that if you start speaking up so it's a bit of both yeah this is true and you know we're expected to be super people super employees and especially the females super women we take care of others we don't get downtime. We're the nurturers. We take care of everything at work. Then we transition to the home life while the work is still in the back of our minds. We've just got to start asking for help Mm -hmm. and to realize that we're doing the best that we can and stop putting all this pressure on ourselves. Yes, and this reminds me, so a previous episode where I had the wonderful Areej Abu Ali, wonderful human being, founder of Women in Tech SEO community. But we had a chat and she said that um, one of the best pieces of advice that she ever got was um, like at the end of the day, when it comes to SEO or marketing, no one's life is at stake, right? What's the worst that can happen? Your rankings drop. A website might go down. Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, this is true. The the sun still comes up. You know, the ranking goes down for 15 seconds. And we put all this pressure on ourselves for something that's just a blip in time. It's not going to solve world peace, what we do. You know, we experiment. If it works, we're heroes. If not... You learn and move up a little bit and learn more. A hundred percent. A hundred percent correct. So obviously we're talking about burnout, but um, there's also the term like being a workaholic, right? I always, like when I think of the term workaholic, I always think that um, that's the step before burnout maybe. Um, I don't know how you feel about this, but like lots of people will say, oh, I suffer with being a workaholic. And then um, if you don't sort of address the so sort of feelings, um, so the telltale signs, so feeling tired, feeling helplessness, feeling detached, cynical, self-doubt, procrastination, feeling overwhelmed, then that can yes. turn into burnout, right? Oh, I do agree with that also. i when you put too much emphasis on only work, it pushes out other things in your life that balance. Anything to excess will throw everything off balance. But sometimes I don't think that workaholics experience this uh, burnout to a degree. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, workaholics, they absolutely adore what they do they wouldn't have it any other way they don't experience burnout necessarily because it's a joy doing what they do um it it, it could lead to burnout absolutely but i used to be a workaholic and i enjoyed it immensely back a few years ago i'd rather be doing work than anything else and it brought me joy and I didn't feel overwhelmed or stressed, but this was many years ago, <laughs> many years ago. But with the increase in responsibilities and as you move to learning and having to learn new things, that's where that workaholic transitions into stress, lots of okay. stress, because you're thrown into the world of unknown. Are you going to be good enough? Will you know what you're doing? All this self-doubt comes in. And then that leads to burnout because now you're working to alleviate your fear instead of working for joy. So yeah, workout workaholics can lead to burnout. Yes, I suppose it depends on like what stage of that journey you're on. And I I yeah, you've brought up a really good point that um responsibility, that's another key thing that can sort of go to burnout because yeah um exactly. you put more stress there's more worry maybe you've got people that manage that are counting on you um exactly. so I mean what can we do then um so is it a case of um talking to someone having a cheerleader blocking out time making sure we have time for mindfulness and having fun like what kind of things can we be doing I agree with all of those things um within myself recently, I did change jobs 
because that was just what I had to work 18 hours a day was just unsustainable. So you can do that if you're able. Think about changing positions. And believe it or not, I've started doing naps in the afternoon. Okay. I heard it's the European way anyway. Uh, what is it in Spain? I think they take a nap. Siesta every... kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give myself permission around three o'clock. I need 10 minutes just to, because my mind is so full of technical aspects of people's websites that it's just overwhelming. I started doing, um, the apps on the computer where every 15 minutes it uh, there's a pop-up and it tells me for 30 seconds, close my eyes, roll my eyes, stand up and stretch. And then at every hour, a gong goes off on the computer and it tells me to get up, go outside and come back in. You know, little things like that. Just to be mindful of the fact that, hey, I've been sitting here for an hour time flies when you're working on SEO. You don't even realize it. So that has actually helped. I, I do that. meditation yeah. every morning. I've got the Calm app. I downloaded that and I joined Calm and I'll do the meditation every morning. And the biggest thing is I am attacking my procrastination habit. How? What is your secret? <laughs> I have stopped putting projects on my to-do list because it's overwhelming. When you have a to-do list and it includes this giant project of doing a technical audit on a million page site, it's overwhelming and you just paralyze yourself with the bigness of it. So I start putting little bitty tasks my to-do list. I've broken that project down. Well, today I'll just do two hours. I'll look at the JavaScript. Don't worry about a giant audit. Just look and play with the JavaScript for a couple of hours and write down what you see. Then let it go and come back tomorrow and attack another part of the audit. Just take the projects off of your to-do list and just replace it with small tasks. Um, I do more enjoyable things. I'll actually turn off the computer at like seven in the hang evening. On, hang on, a computer can be turned off, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn off all four of them. I've got four computers. <laughs> you know me, I'm an overachiever. And I'll turn off the phone and I'll just go watch television, mindless television. I'll go watch Project Runway. I've watched episodes 30, 40 times. I can, I know it by heart, but it's just that mindless, you don't think about anything. And that, those things have helped, it have calms me down and it's taken me to a point where I can deal with the job. I don't have as many doubts and fears. And I've also reached out to the community. I've started putting a lot of questions in the Women in Tech SEO group, I used to break my neck helping other people, but I realized that I need to start raising my hand and asking for help and allowing people to help me. Yes, 100%. That's been wonderful. Oh, that's some really great um, tips there. There's lots of um, things that you've said that people can try. And I suppose that's it, isn't it? You've got to try things, right? Exactly. Um, have a go, see what works for you. The one thing that did spring to mind, so when you were saying about um, if you've got a big project, um, uh, break it apart into smaller manageable chunks. Um, something else that I've started to do is um, if I – if there's a call, right, and there's like a, a task that I need to do after the call, rather than adding that onto my to-do list, I try and get that done so that oh. the, quick, the quick wins. Because some like because my because you could be adding on to a to-do list forever, absolutely. Right? Um, and sometimes it can feel like you're adding 
quicker. And nothing's getting scratched off. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> if I'm feeling like that, I'm just like, right, I just need to get something done. Like I've got five minutes here or you can, when you're putting in your meetings, have a bit of time in between to do, do you know what I mean? Like there's all these exactly. different ways that you can manage and it's just finding what works. Oh, I like those tips. I'll uh, start, just do it. Just take <laughs> five minutes and just do it. <laughs> Just, just do what you can. Would you be able to send across the, you said about the app um, that you use? I absolutely will. If you send that across, we can include that in the show notes for people to go and check that out. I'll be happy. Um, yeah. It, it, it helps. I mean, you'd be surprised. You sit here and I love what I do. Love it, love it, love it. I'll get so engrossed that I'll look up and it's three hours later. I'm like, where'd three hours go? But these apps, they just remind me, hey, it's been an hour. Get up. Do something. <laughs> yes. I, I'd love for people to start trying that. Yeah. And, like, and they can be really small things. Another thing that, um, ah, uh, so I don't know where I heard this one from, but someone said, um, just take your eyes off from the screen and look outside into nature. And just watch something in nature. So whether that's a bird or you watch a tree and a leaf falling down, just like look at something out in nature. Hang your head out of a window. (laughs) I like that. I like that. Every uh, half hour, just do that. Yeah. And all all you have to do is look look to the side and uh yeah um <laughs> well I've but... got six cats and one dog so I could turn around and watch the cats and yeah, the dog there you go. play just disconnect for 30 seconds that's a great idea I mean pet therapy is a thing stroke go and stroke an animal <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty of those so I, I can do that <laughs> I'm just gonna say a caveat like if they're your own animal that's fine but like get permission from like don't just go get, don't go into a zoo and pet <laughs> start, start petting it's a line. whole other level of stress <laughs> I agree Oh, I mean, I'm very sorry to say this, Brenda, because I've this I've had a whale of a time, but half an hour is gone. We have run out of time. We have burned our time, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> I mean, I think, is there anything quickly that you wanted to say or do you feel you could No, I just want to tell other people who are experiencing burnout, just take time to reflect and try to get to the root of why is it because you're putting off tasks because your toe is so big break those tasks down or if you feel you have the need to be perfect stop it you already know more than 99 percent of the people in the world just get your thoughts your projects on paper the worst that can happen as arish says is you know the rankings go down for 15 minutes they'll be back up they fluctuate anyway (laughs) Exactly. Blame it on something else. Blame it on an algorithm update, you know. (laughs) Blame it on Google. Oh, that tricks to Google again. Just be kind to yourself. Yes, get yourself a cheerleader as well. So uh, one last question before we sign off. I would just like to know what is your best bit of career advice that you've ever received? Uh, Be happy and never stop learning for yourself. Learn for what you need to do your job, but for yourself, keep learning and growing and growing your world of community. Community is so important. We're not an island here. The more people who are there to truly support you, it's it's like a lifeboat. You'll be so much happier in your profession and your career to know that there are other people like you. Because I didn't even know that you yourself had experienced some burnout. So you're not alone. Just reach out, connect with community, and share your experiences. Yes. And don't take it seriously. The world will still spin if you miss deadlines. Don't it's worry not go- about it's it. It's not going to explode. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Right then, where if people want to carry on this conversation, see what you're doing, uh, that sort of stuff, where are you? Where can they find you? Well, I hang out on Twitter, but I'm going to try to stop hanging out on Twitter so much and get some tasks done. But um, I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, 
I'm currently working at Neil Patel Digital. So send me an email there. I'll have my email in the show notes. But usually on Twitter is where I hang out. There's some lively discussions on Twitter. Uh, yeah, 100% agree, 100% agree. Uh, I would just like to say a massive thank you to Brenda for joining me for this week's episode. Yes, and if you would like to reach out to us, talk to us, uh, we are on Twitter. We are at, at SEO Mindset Pod. I'm also on Twitter, Sarah MCD UK, or as uh, someone pointed out to me, Sarah McDuck, fun way to. Uh, remember that one <laughs> so yeah reach reach out to us suggest a topic uh suggest coming on like brenda has um yeah get yes. get talking to us so yeah let's let's say goodbye brenda then thank you sarah this was so lovely i appreciate the opportunity to talk because talking is what i do <laughs> i love talking i love talking uh right um until next time everyone 